Lots on, but you're not home. That song and Addicted to Love. Or are they both? That, that's Addicted to Love. That that's song, Addicted to Love, and then Simply Irresistible is the yeah, other. Both those songs. songs could be country songs. Should be country songs. <laughs> I'm so. You like to think that you're something a stud. Oh, yeah. When I have to face it, you're addicted to love. You're just singing the song with a southern accent. Yeah, but That's, it's like. That doesn't make but it a it country song. But it would sound song. great as a country song. And they don't say you think you're a stud. You say you think you're immune to the stuff. Yeah, okay, but thinking you're a stud sounds more country. <laughs> no, it doesn't. <laughs> yeah, stud, because they got studs on ranches. <laughs> Those are horses. And bulls, yes. <laughs> Might as well face it, you're addicted to the. I'm sorry, I don't have any orchestration behind me to demonstrate this. Any I mean, plinking banjos. Country artists could really do something with those by basically doing the songs exactly as they are, but with a southern accent. Take notice, Nashville. Mm-hmm. And now, on to movies. Good, that's why I came here. I've got a bunch of movies that I've never seen before. You don't know what they are. Every episode, I'm going to spring one on you. It might be good, it might be bad. We'll watch it and talk about it. Welcome to the basement. We're celebrating auteurs here on Welcome to the Basement. Last time, Craig drew a name out of this here safari helmet, and I was a sneaky little scamp, and I didn't let him know who the name was, but I'm going to tell him today. But before I do that, Craig? Yes, Matt? Would you like to know who's in the hat? I'd be happy to tell you. Listen closely. I will only read this list once. Wilder, Bogdanovich, Coppola, Fellini, Wells, Murnau, Kurosawa, Godard, Peckinpah, Ashby, Hitchcock, Lubitsch, Mamet, Emotivar, Malik, and Cirque. Wait a minute. That's just lyrics from... It's the end of the world as we know. Oh, okay. And I feel fine. It's also a list of directors that are in the hat. Leonard Bernstein. Craig, if you had your druthers, what name would I be holding in my hand? Well, I've always wanted druthers. I'd say Hitchcock. I'm sorry to say, it is not Hitchcock. Oh, someday I'll get my druthers. The name that we drew last time is Malik. Oh, my. We're going to be here a while. For the ones who had a notion, a notion deep inside, that it ain't no sin to be glad you're alive, we'll keep pushing till it's understood, and these Badlands start treating us good. You haven't seen Badlands! That's the premise of the show. That, that is the premise of our show. I, that, that really surprises me. Released in 1973, Badlands stars Martin Sheen, Sissy Spacek, and Warren Oates. Director Terrence Malick, a protege of Arthur Penn, began work on this film while he was still a student at the American Film Institute. Malick provided $25,000 of his own money to finance the picture, and he and executive producer Edward Pressman got the rest of the funds from doctors and dentists, apparently. I don't know much about the plot of this movie, but I know it features some people doing some very bad things. Yes. Are these people young and misguided, or are they evil? It's my wish for you, Craig, to avoid evil whenever possible. And hopefully this gift will help you. It's monkeys giving me instructions. <laughs> Helpful monkeys. Yes, they're telling me uh, in, in Spanish that I should hear no evil, see no evil, or what? Taste? Speak. Speak no evil. Oh, I got so much evil to speak. But I guess I'll just have to do it on my blogs. Well, come on in the car with us and embark on a spree. A movie spree. As we head out across the heartland over to the old leather couch to watch Badlands. Out in a small town in South Dakota, Kit Carruthers is a garbage man. Garbage! Get your garbage! Offering his co-workers money to eat dead animals that they come upon. I'll give you a dollar eat this collie. I don't want to eat him for a dollar. One day he meets Holly. A character that is into baton twirling is movie code for a slut. He's no slut. That's what a face in the crowd taught me. <laughs> There's like 20 baton twirlers in that. And they're all whores. <laughs> And they start dating. Did it go the way it's supposed to? Yeah. See where that tree fell in the water? That's a symbol of your virginity. They fall in love, even though she's a little too young for him. Like really young, like 15. And her father doesn't approve. Look, I got a lot of respect for her too, sir. I respected her up against a tree by the river the other day. <laughs> I don't want to see you again. Kit confronts Holly's dad with a gun and tells him he's taking her away. Got a gun here, sir. Lighten up, Francis. Holly's dad doesn't like that, and Kit guns him down. Shoots him right there in the living room. Kit decides to fake his and Holly's death via a self-recorded vinyl record. Very hip and retro. 
This is a record. Is he at Third Man Records doing this? <laughs> he burns down Holly's house and they hit the road. They move out to the wilderness and build an incredibly elaborate tree house. Is this movie turning into the Mosquito yeah. Coast? <laughs> Nice choice. Yeah. These two are a couple little hipsters. Yeah. They're listening to this cool music. He's got this, like, grandma outfit on. It's great. Artisanal fishers. <laughs> a man reports a strange person shooting at fish in the river. Then bounty hunters start closing in. But Kit gets the drop on him and guns them all down. Put three more notches on the treehouse. <laughs> and then they go on the run. They go and visit Kit's friend, Kato. Kato's the garbage man who wouldn't eat the dead dog from earlier in the movie. They eat, they have some laughs, and Kit guns him down. Sensing a theme? I bet you are. Not this way, Kato. We can talk about this inside. <laughs> I shot first, now for the questions. When Terrence Malick remastered this movie, he did a cut where Kato shot first. <laughs> <laughs> Very unpopular with the Badlands fans yeah. out there. Everything's going fine until two more people show up to see Kato. Kit locks them in a tornado shelter and guns them down. At this point, Holly starts to get worried. Kit was the most trigger-happy person I'd ever met. <laughs> I'd say Kit is trigger ecstatic. On the run they go. Everyone in the state is out looking for these two. Cops, bounty hunters, this guy. Kit decides they need some supplies, and so they go to where the supplies are. A rich guy's house. I'd like to hang out here for... Stay as long as you like. Crashing on somebody's couch. Hipsters. Yeah. Airbnb. Planet Theremin. <laughs> oh, that's a wine glass. <laughs> <laughs> Listen to your parents and teachers. They got a line on most things, so don't treat them like enemies. Note to self. Learn how to turn this on. <laughs> That's Terrence Malick. Oh, really? Yeah, I think. Right. No, of course not. Uh... Gosh, I like your house. Listen, I know a lot of doctors and dentists, and they've got a lot of money. <laughs> they steal a few things, lock the man in a storeroom, and Kit does not gun him down. Whew! In their stolen Cadillac, they take off across the Great Plains. He looks like Uncle Owen won't let him join the rebel fleet. <laughs> I'm a scarecrow, and I'm effective at it. Do you see any scarecrows? He's a scarecrow that scares scarecrows. <laughs> Afterwards, he took and buried some of our things in a bucket. Geocaching, hipsters. They dance to Nat King Cole songs in the headlights of their car. And Kit slowly realizes that he can't run forever. The law is going to take him down. They stop to steal some gas, and a helicopter shows up to get them. <laughs> Kit says, come on, Holly, let's get out of here. And Holly says that she's not going to run anymore. Holly's arrested, and Kit makes a mad dash for it. But pretty soon, he's chased by more cops. There's a high-speed, dusty chase through the dirt. Kit evades the cops, but then... He stops, he builds a little stone sculpture, surrenders himself to the law. And you know what? The law loves him. They think that he's a handsome man. I'll kiss your ass if you don't look like James Dean. Kit gives out souvenirs to everyone. He's briefly reunited with Holly, chained up in a handcuff belt. Sorry if I caused you any inconvenience. You didn't cause me any trouble. Thanks, anyway. We're going to name our new precinct after you. <laughs> we, just, we really like you. And they fly Kit and Holly back to South Dakota. Holly is freed, and Kit gets the chair. It all worked out for him. Yep. <laughs> well, that was quite a road trip that we just took with Kit and Holly, and we learned that, sure, they're serial killers, but they're also just a couple of hipsters. Uh, hipsters are just trying to be like Matt and Holly. Kit and Holly. <laughs> you called Kit the murderer by my name. What are you trying to say? Well, you have tried... I will shoot you! You... be cool, man. Just be cool, you know? When we talked about Wuthering Heights a few episodes back, I said the overall theme was hopelessness. Yes. I think the overall theme of this movie is pointlessness. Oh, yeah. Anything that anyone does comes from nothing, and it means nothing, except ending someone's life, obviously. Yeah. They um, just kind of drive around in circles. The subject matter, obviously, is very heavy. There's lots of killing and murdering. Mm -hmm. But I don't think I would call it a dark film. It just seems like a road movie. Yeah. With these two characters who are really kind of disconnected from life and disconnected from the reality of what they're doing. I didn't feel shame or fear. It just kind of blah. 
Like when you're sitting there and all the water's run out of the bathtub. They are so distant from it. They weren't killing people and then having passionate sex or something like that. Right, right. They're just right. killing people and then moving on to the next thing. You leave with a feeling of desolation, but at the same time a feeling of wonder. Probably the most striking aspect of this film is the visuals, the photography. Yes. How does that help tell the story. With Malick, there's always the nature thing. And so you have to pull back and see how small he is in the entire universe. Man's acts are unnatural. There's no animal in nature that murders another animal for no reason. Yeah. The second time going through the movie, I found that the creepiest aspect of it was Sissy Spacek. She's just dispassionate. When they're taking the couple out to the storm cellar. They're just chatting yeah. like girlfriends. Yeah. You can argue that she's an innocent and she she's too young and she doesn't know what's going on, but I think she's just as much of a sociopath as he is. Yeah. If you're 15, you know that it's wrong to gun people down for no reason. Mm -hmm. But he did always find ways to justify the people that he killed. He stole that cage. This is my justification for killing Cato. He stole that cage. I saw him doing it. There's that part where he talks about the rich guy in the room that he doesn't kill. Yeah. He's just lucky he's not dead, too. It wasn't a choice that I made. That guy was just lucky. <laughs> yeah. It's obvious the two of us are big fans of this movie. What are the cons? You know what? I gotta say, I'm at a loss. I can't think of any either. I wish I could. Sorry, folks. You know, it's, it's they all right. They depend on us to poke holes in, the, in cinema classics. <laughs> and we can't do that, Craig. Yeah, yeah, that's right. We poked a few holes in Roman Holiday. Yeah, because you don't like boop, 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 Gregory Beck. <laughs> Just like my once a decade trip I take out to South Dakota, I always like going back to Badlands. And you will enjoy it too if you take a look at it on your computer screen or television. Be sure to check it out. Hey, while you're checking things out, you can also check out welcome to the basement show.com, our website, the home of all things related to this show. It's where I live too. You can't live in the World Wide Web. Oh no, I've gone complete snow crash on you guys. We have a newly updated Hall of Fame page. You can look at that and you can also click on the PayPal donation button and make a donation to support the show. It only takes a dollar or two. It'll make you happy. It'll make you feel like you did something good. Unlike the characters in this movie, they just shoot guns at us for no reason. Donate money, not bullets. Our recent donators include Terry, who writes, You Bastitches. A little bit of uh, Johnny, Johnny, da Dangerously. Johnny Dangerously there. I saw Viva Las Vegas when it was first released. I was 11. If I had seen Anne Margaret's bathing suit in 1964 like I just did, I would still be institutionalized for not being able to keep my hands out of my pants. <laughs> Thank you, Terry. Elizabeth, Stefan, Alexander, Leston, who writes, Hi guys, big fan. Really appreciate you watching these esoteric movies so I don't have to. Oh, you should watch them, though. And Julia, who says, Good work, young Turks. We've got some more fan art, Craig. Yeah. I always love this. People who make artwork on our show post it on our Facebook page, and we might just show it on this show. we got our good buddy Chris Pollock, who has made some more artwork for us. Here we have Wuthering Heights. Beautiful shot. Nice one there. And our most recent movie that we watched, The Counselor. Kind of disturbing, that one. <laughs> it is. <laughs> yes. This picture is from Matthew Albanese. There it is. I think you've perfectly captured Craig's essence. And finally, we have a little photo that Violent Frog sent us. It's his child watching our show. We're always happy to educate the youth about rounders. And I have a customer comment from NDGV2. This and True Detective are the only shows worth watching. Wow. That's high praise. And now it's time for Seen It. Seen It. Kenneth Roundtree says, Wrist Cutters, a love story. Seen it. I feel giddy whenever I think about that movie. It was made in the mid-2000s, yeah. but it really feels like a movie from the late 80s or early 90s, from the era of the true... Independence. Yeah. It looks like it could be a Richard Linklater film or an Alex Cox film. It really has that quirky style. And also it has Tom Waits in it, which helps. <laughs> yeah. Stephanie Uke writes, Sucker Punch. Seen it. Not seen it. I know Stephanie likes this movie, but I gotta speak my mind. <laughs> Go ahead, Matt. That's uh, why we're here. Geeksploitation? Is that a thing? I... <laughs> If it's not a thing, I want it to be a thing, and yeah. I want it to be attributed to me. The movie pushes all the geek buttons. Oh, let's take these beautiful women and dress them up as strippers, and give them guns and swords, and have them slay dragons and kill Nazis. And wouldn't that be cool, nerds? All the nerd girls are expected to go, yay, women! And the nerd guys are expected to go, oh, women! It's a very manipulative experience, because they expect people who are into nerd culture 
to like it because it contains things that they like. But as a movie, there's nothing there. It's just this howling void. Wow. And the only thing worse than the lack of plot and the insult to mine and everyone else on the planet's intelligence that it is, <laughs> is the constant parade of shitty cover versions of great songs. It's offensive on so many levels. I kind of want to see it now. You should see it. You need to go through what I went through. <laughs> Dylan Bowman 11 asks, have you guys seen Hedvig and the Angry Inch? Seen it. Yeah, seen it. I love that movie. That's one of the most creative movies I've ever seen. Great music, great cinematography, great performances. I remember liking it. It seemed like people were so excited about it because it was so transgressive. Mm -hmm. But I just thought, well, it's okay. The second time I saw the movie... I saw it with uh, local scenesters, and I local was, scenesters, local scenesters, and I was really something your dad would say. Yeah, and uh, are you going out with those local scenesters, <laughs> son? Okay, the second time I saw the movie, and like most of them got up and left after the scene where Hedvig kisses his little boyfriend. Huh. I was like, really? You can't take two men kissing each other passionately in a movie. I thought you guys were cool. Now I'll hang out with you. Hey, who I knew right off the bat wasn't cool. Oh, why do you have to ruin it? <laughs> I was going to kiss you passionately on the mouth, but now I'm not. Christopher Gully asks, Hey, Matt and Craig. Wondering if you've seen Galaxy Quest. It's one of my guilty pleasures. By Grab Thor's Hammer, I have seen it. Seen it. I remember that line. Yeah. <laughs> it's a movie that, if I catch it on TV, I have to clear out my schedule until the movie's over. Mm. I just have to keep watching the movie. It was fine. Yeah. El Ender Del Sono writes, It would mean a lot to me if you could discuss my favorite movie, The Dark Knight. Seen it. Yes, I've seen it. I have to bring up the unfortunate and untimely passing of Heath Ledger. Sometimes it feels as though you trivialize a person's death by saying, Oh, it was too bad they died. They had so many great performances to do. When obviously they're a person with a family and friends yeah. and everything. But I don't know Heath Ledger. So I can only grieve him through the loss of his work to cinema as a yes. whole. He won a, a really, I thought, well-deserved Oscar for this performance. I always love it when people in comedy movies and action movies win Oscars, actors, because it's so rare. But other than Heath Ledger, what's there to see in Dark Knight? Everything. It's just, yeah. uh, it's just really, really fun. So as long as you don't think about the likelihood of any of these things actually being able to be pulled off either by Batman or the Joker, it just works. That's seen it. And that's our show. Thank you so much for joining us. We finally watched Badlands after all these years. Yes, you finally did. And you brought me along with you. We want to thank all of our donors, of course. We want you to go to welcometothebasementshow.com and you check it out. And we have another auteur to draw from the Safari Helmet. Who is it going to be? Do you remember that list? that I read to you earlier. Yeah. I hope you were listening closely, because we're going to do a little gambling. Yeah. If you can guess what name is on this paper, then you will get to pick the movie by that auteur. You got a 1 in 15 chance. <laughs> 1 in 15 chance. I'll say Hitchcock again. Stick him with Hitchcock. Only, because he's the only one I remember. I'm sorry, it is not Hitchcock. What name do I hold in my hand? I'm not going to make you wait this time. Oh. I'll, I'll tell you. Okay. It is David Mamet. Oh, David Mamet. So, you <laughs> <laughs> Join us next time when we watch a David Mamet film. See you then. Fuck. Because <laughs> David Mamet likes to curse a lot. He likes to see, yeah, he's, there's lots of swearing. Well, then I'll see you again. Next time you stalk me. You want to go for a ride? This isn't a ride. <laughs> I'll give you a dollar, eat this collie.